Awesome. So great to see everybody online and in person. Some of you go, well, Pastor, how can you see them online? It's because of these special glasses that I got from the future the other day. Y'all think I'm playing. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Because some of y'all are like, praise the Lord. He can time travel now. It was just the moment. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, I want to welcome all of our guests so much. Can we give it up for our guests? Thank y'all so much. And let's give it up for the mighty men and beautiful women of all of our correctional facilities in the state of South Carolina and to the TC family near and far. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm kind of sad because we're finishing up this Gospel Friends series. And um, I don't know about you, but it has deeply affected me. If we have learned anything in the last 18 months is that we need each other, and there are dark forces that want to divide us. But Jesus is a unifier. And to be unified don't, don't mean we got to agree upon everything, but we agree upon the main things. As a matter of fact, my wife and I don't agree upon everything. I like musicals. She doesn't. And by the way, today is our 29th wedding anniversary. Uh, I don't feel, I know, right? That's crazy. Got married in college. 20, like, we're like officially like grown-ups when you get close to 30 years of marriage. Like, man, I'm grown up in here. Anyway, so uh, this series has touched me deeply. I hope it's done the same for you. And so as we conclude, uh, we want to talk about this, overcoming evil with good. Uh, overcoming evil with good. And sometimes it can just seem so overwhelming. But it's important for us to have a clear understanding of God's kingdom. God's kingdom is here, but not fully. God's kingdom is giving glimpses, but not yet fully here. And so you and I become like flashlights lighting up the darkness, pushing it back until that great and glorious day. So I know some of you are incredibly frustrated, like, when are things going to change? And Jesus is like, when I come back. But until I do, I want you to join me in pushing back the darkness. You're like, what does this have to do with friendship? Everything. When we understand what true friendship is. Uh, several weeks ago, we started with this. What is true friendship? What is gospel friendship? Gospel friendship is this. Someone who's walking alongside you in relationship to help you become the best possible version of yourself. Everybody understand Say that? A true gospel friend. And what do I mean? Hey, uh, turn me down a little bit because I'm going to start yelling soon and it's going to blow some stuff up up here. And it's not as crowded yet, so turn me down. It'll mess with my, there we go. That's better. Now I can yell fully. If you're new here, I yell from the Bible, okay? Praise God back there, sis. I see you. All right, so listen. Listen. Um, so, so, so a gospel friend is one who is shaped by the sinless life of Jesus. That they point to Jesus and go, he lived a sinless life because I couldn't, and I'm so grateful. So for all of us uh, perfectionists, you ready? This is deep. Get over yourself, please. There's only one who's been perfect. It ain't you and it ain't me. It's him. If you could be perfect, Jesus wouldn't have came. God does not rescue holy people. He comes to rescue people who are unholy. So chill out a little bit. You ain't that big of a deal, and neither am I. Jesus is the big deal. A gospel friend is one who is shaped by this incredible sacrifice of King Jesus, that upon that cross, it should have been you, it should have been me, and Jesus died to purify us, to cleanse us, so his daddy could be with us. Forgiven, redeemed. And then on the third day, Jesus raises again, and he ascends to the right hand of his daddy to live in and through his people so that we can encourage each other to be the best versions of who he's created us to be for his glory. And here's a question I asked weeks ago, who in your life is that kind of friend? Because if not, you really don't have friends. Oftentimes we think a friend is someone we always have fun with. I think I'm a funny person. Now when I get done here, I'm going home because I'm peopled out. <laughs> Seriously, I'd be tired of human beings. So I gotta work really hard, like I'm an introvert. So getting on stage is hard. So when I get done here, we'll go eat. I'll see you at a restaurant. I love you. I want to go home now and rest. Here's my point, though. 
God is calling me and you to grow out of all those things that prevent us from loving and serving humanity the way he called us. And we need friends to champion us. Who is your friend like that? Gospel friendships that last have a commitment to joining God and overcoming evil. Have a gospel commitment to joining God and overcoming evil. Okay, um, let me just dive right in. All right, so if you're new to Transformation Church, our understanding of the gospel is not this. Hey, Jesus died for your sins. You're really screwed up, and you get to go to heaven when you die. Until then, he'll make your life and your dreams come true, and it'll be awesome. Now, we could be three times as big as we are now, but I have no interest in that because that's not the whole story. The story is, yes, he did die, and yes, he did raise again, and yes, we have, we'll have glorified, resurrected bodies in a new heaven and a new earth, but he's calling you to partnership. He's calling you to be his hands. He's calling you and I to be his feet, and many of us are stuck and tired of life because we're going, Jesus, Make my dreams come true. And he's like, have you read the Bible? There's only one dream, and it's God's dream to heal this broken world, and he wants you and I to join him. So many Christians are like, oh, God, come get me in a vacuum cleaner and suck me up into the sky. And God is going, didn't I say something like, do on earth? earth as it is in heaven. So you're trying to escape, and I'm trying to get down. Get down on it. Get down on it. See, y'all, y'all know, uh, I hit the new one on y'all too. Don't be tripping. All right, here we go. Romans 12, 21. We've been walking through the book of Romans. And let me give you some history Because if we don't know the historical context of the Bible, we'll try to put Jesus in the 21st century, and he wasn't. He was in the first century. We don't want to dehistorialize the Bible. I just made up a word. I'm black. I can do that. (laughs) This is what's happening. The city of Rome is where everything is happening. The cult of Caesars there. Caesar was called a, a son of God, the Caesars, and In AD 49, Emperor Claudius kicked all the Jewish people out of Rome. Why? Because there were some Jews who would go into the synagogue and say, Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus is the Messiah we've been waiting for. And the non-believing Jews would go, no, 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 we don't believe in a Messiah who died. Forget that. Our Messiah was supposed to kill the Romans. And they're like, no, no, our Messiah wants to save the Romans and you. No, we want to make Israel great again. No, forget all that other stuff. We want a Messiah that's going to kick some booty. Can I say that in church? I just did. And he's like, no, no, I actually kicked sin, death, and evil and destroyed them so that even the oppressor can get grace. God's grace is for everybody. That's the Hebrew, everybody. Claudius got angry because there were riots, and he kicked all the Jewish people out from AD 49 to AD 54. And in between those five years, guess what was happening in those house churches all throughout Rome? Gentiles or non-Jews were leading. Now, if you're not an ethnic Jew, you are a Gentile. AD 54, Nero is king Emperor, he goes, Jews, you can come back. The Jews come back to their house churches like, the varsity's here. Y'all JV guys can sit back because, you know, we're God's people. And the Gentiles are like, hold on, no, 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 no. In Jesus, we're all God's people. There's no Jewish supremacy. There's no Gentile supremacy. There's only the supremacy of Christ, which means we love each other equally. But then there were Gentiles who were like, we better than y'all. And there were Jews like, no, we better than y'all. And Paul writes them to go, no, At the foot of the cross, Jesus is better, and all of us need his blood. Therefore, we love each other equally in the gospel of Christ. Can you imagine if that would have been preached 300 years ago? It would be hard to own slaves. Ooh. Y'all felt that, right? (laughs) Okay. Don't send me an email. It's true. (laughs) So how do we overcome evil with good? We have to confront it. 
So, as you guys know, it's been a hard year, and I'm thankful that COVID is decreasing in America. It's cool to actually see y'all faces. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But in India right now, COVID is raging really, really bad. And if I can be vulnerable right now, I'm somewhat angry about how this terrible disease was dismissed and disinformation and bodies piling up and people dying for political expediency. And we have a whole continent where literally they're running out of room in morgues and human beings are just being burned alive. So the question is, what do we do? You're like, well, I'm just me here in America. What can we do? Well, I wanna show you one thing that we can do. Uh, there's an organization called A Convoy of Hope and it's responding with much needed relief and food to families that are grieving in India and trying to survive. They have mobilized in the north and the south areas of India in order to help. And Transformation Church, because of your financial generosity, we are giving $10,000 to overcome that evil with good. Also, uh, Joel Mutamale, who is a part of our church, and he teaches here at Transformation Church, his mother is a part of an organization in India as well, and we're also giving $10,000 to that organization. So keep, keep in mind, when you give, when we collectively give, we are making a difference. Now, for some of you going, well, Derwin, what have we done here in America? Just look at our website and you'll see. <laughs> Besides, why wouldn't we want to do something for somebody else? Like, what did Jesus say? Only us. No, like, for God so loved a few people. So God also only loved people that look like him. For God so loved the world. Here's a special message from Joel. Check this out. Hey TC, it's Joel. Hey, I just wanted to pop in here and just say thank you so much to TC, to the elders, to the executive team um, for uh, your giving, your heroic giving to um, the Unicorpus organization that uh, is working really hard right now uh, to combat the devastation that COVID um, is really like, wreaking havoc on in India. And so if you've been watching the news or um, seeing on your social, you've been noticing that uh, the rapid rate of death in India because of COVID has just been devastating like utterly devastating. And what Unicorpus is doing is actually working with uh, nonprofit organizations, nonprofit healthcare facilities that are connected in these village areas and in major cities that are working specifically with those that don't have um, economic financial ability in order to pay for these services in the government hospitals. And so this is an incredible example of, of what we get to partner uh, as a church uh, in an area where gospel friends, like our sermon series, gospel friends overcome evil with good. And so the evil that um, COVID has wreaked on, uh, on an entire world right now, um, the evil of a system, honestly, and a structure that um, relegates uh, healthcare just for those that have money and resources, all of those things can be overcome when the gospel, when the people of God themselves partner together, I think of Acts chapter two, when all the believers had everything in common and they all come together and they pool all their resources together to care for each other, to care for those that don't have in order to show them the gospel is good news, not just for someday, but for today. So I just wanna thank you for making a real difference. My, my mom is a part of Unicorpus and she's a part of this ministry and she's a nurse practitioner and she has dedicated her life to medical missions. And so I spoke with her the other day and she is just literally in tears over your kindness and over your generosity. Uh, and literally right now they're working to get oxygen mach machines, beds, um, all kinds of medical equipment that is so vitally needed right now. And your generosity, your partnership, your help, your gospel friendship makes it possible for us to overcome evil with good. TC, love y'all. So grateful that I get to say that TC is my church family. Later. Way to go, Transformation Church. So 
When we give, that's an act of worship that touches hurting people all around the world. You see, gospel friends that last are committed to good. On the count of three, would you say good with me? One, two, three, good. Well, I'm gonna give you the acronym good. So teenagers, Gen Z, preteens, I want you to write down this acronym. Take notes, put it in your smartphone, on whatever it is that you do. But true friendships, they are committed to good. And the G stands for this. They're committed to God's kingdom. They are committed to God's kingdom. Your, your true gospel friends are committed to God's kingdom. Let's look at Mark chapter 1, verse 15. It says this, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. A couple things. The word repent means turn around. And so Jesus steps on the stage of history. And he says, the life you were created for, the sins you need forgiven, the purpose you want is found in me. The kingdom of God has come near. And here's an elusive question. What exactly is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is the way Jesus loved people. The kingdom of God is the way Jesus fed the hungry. The kingdom of God is the way Jesus overturned tables in the corrupt temple. The kingdom of God is Jesus going to the cross. The kingdom of God is telling Peter, yo, I know you're gonna deny me three times, but when I raise again, I'm gonna be on the beach cooking some fish and I'm gonna invite you to have some. You see, the kingdom of God is Jesus meeting a Samaritan woman at the well and breaking down ethnic and sexism, misogynistic barriers. The kingdom of God is Jesus looking at Pontius Pilate and could have obliterated him, but instead was obliterated for our sins. The kingdom of God is Jesus. The kingdom of God has come near, and the king is inviting you and I into his kingdom, which means he's inviting us to experience his life, to experience his power, to experience his purpose, to experience a whole new reality. Jesus is the star of the show. He's the headliner. He's not like your co-pilot. I I hate those bumpers. Jesus is my co-pilot. Really? Like the one who made the Milky Way galaxy and the oxygen we breathe, you his co-pilot? Isn't he the one who rose from the dead? Isn't he the one who defeated sin, death, and evil? He don't need a co-pilot. He just needs vulnerable hearts that say, I'm yours. That's all he needs. The kingdom of God is near. He's inviting us into that kingdom. That's the G, teenagers, young adults. Listen, some of you are incredibly gifted. Some of you, I've seen y'all grow up from this to this, and you're going off to college, you're gonna do amazing things. This is my hope for you, is that you don't get successful at the wrong things. My hope for you is you're not successful but miserable. My hope for you that your goal is not simply to make a lot of money. My hope for you is you say, Jesus, here is my life. Your will be done and use me as your hands and feet. And and that's where the joy is. That's that's where the purpose is. And I know for some of you, you watch the older generation and you're like, so this is what it's about? Always being stressed out? Buying stuff you can't afford? Trying to impress people who refinance and moved out the neighborhood? So is this what it's really, really about? And a lot of parents, a lot of our kids are stressed. I I remember the high school that my daughter used to go to. Everything was always about grades, grades, grades. Now, are grades important? Yeah, but C's get degrees. Some of y'all CEOs now with C's. Talking about I ain't gonna show you my transcript. Now, am I saying don't get good grades? Get good grades. My son isn't here, so I can brag on him. It's a second semester in a row, he's made the president's list at the University of Montana with a 4.0. That's awesome. I'm so proud of him. Now listen, teenagers, don't be studying with a C work ethic and asking God for an A, though. Oh, Lord, give me an A. And he's like, well, you're studying for a C, though. My point is this. We want to have this desire to say, God, your will be done. We need people who encourage us. 
Anybody here ever do CrossFit before? Anybody? So I don't do CrossFit because I did that my whole career from like 14 to whenever I retired. And plus, I ain't paying nobody to hurt me. <laughs> For real. Like, I'm like, nope, you ain't yelling at me. Like, I have tackled Barry Sanders. You are not yelling at me telling me. Plus, my back is broke, though, man. I broke my back spinal. I mean, it's just messed up. Anyway. But one of the things I appreciate about CrossFit culture, because I see them at the Y, they're all like running together, eating smoothies, and it's amazing. But they encourage each other. It's like a community, right? As a matter of fact, it looks a lot like this. Where's my CrossFit fit folks at? Where they at? All right, come out here, Lord. This is Lord Triceps right here. So like a third grader grew on his tricep. (laughs) This is Mark. I call him Rip Fuel because he has no body fat. And this is my, uh, my buddy, give me some. Now, now, for real, of these three right here, though, if you go to her IG, this woman would be like lifting like countries. <laughs> it's amazing. So like if you were their CrossFit coach to get them to have these incredible bodies, what would you say to them? I would say, good morning. Our first exercise for this morning is the push-up position. Let us assume the push-up position. And by the way, he, you were in the Marines, right? Yes, sir. He was in the Marines. Let's just give it up for him. So don't trip. All right, go for it. Go for it. Ready? Go. One, two, three. Four. One, two, three. Two. One, two, three. Three. Yeah, yeah. Three, I mean, look four. at these people. Okay. And, and like, let's, let's say if they was having a rough day, like their coffee hadn't kicked in yet. Like, what would you say to them? I would say, let's get it together today. Let's make it happen. Today we're gonna assume the shot straddle hop. What is that? <laughs> Jumping jacks. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll let's go. One, two, three. One, one, two. Okay, 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 I get it. So, so like that motivation is, is good, right? It's good. Now, what if, like, let's just say, what if you woke up? Here, you can become one of, one of them. And let's say you had, like, instead of a CrossFit coach, you had a Cross fit coach. And you woke up in the morning like this. This morning, <laughs> you're gonna remember what Jesus did for you on the cross. He bled and he died. He reconciled, he justified, he secured your place in a new heavens and new earth. He forgave your sin, he forgot it because he took you to the wind. Like, what would happen if you had friends like that that would just inspire you to be obedient? Yeah. No, seriously, what, what if you had friends that would inspire you? You know what would happen is we would you lose our spiritual flab and get in spiritual shape. Thank you, guys. You're good. Thank you. <laughs> Who are your CrossFit friends that encourage you to obey the gospel? Now, I'm not talking about the friends that be like, now, girl, listen, he did you wrong. You need to let him have it. Put it on Snapchat, you free now. And then do like a pretty picture of yourself showing the world. What what about if you had a friend who said, man, that breakup was tough. Let's pray for him. Or, or, or what about the person who's going, man, that person at your job and all the gossip and the gossip and, and you had your gospel friend like, why are you talking about that person? You don't know what they're going through. They may be suffering from brain health. They may have lost a loved one. Their husband or wife may be able to walk on them. Their children may be struggling. You're sitting there slandering them when you should be. They're loving them. What kind of friends like that call you on the carpet? Or do you just have yes men and yes people behind you? Because typically, most of us like people to tell us and endorse what we want to do. Don't we? Let me give you a silly illustration. I do it all the time. If I come to you and I'm like, hey, I'm trying out for American Idol. If you're a true friend, you would go, pastor, never, ever, don't do it. But in today's world, you're a hater if you go, listen, pastor, you can do a lot of things pretty good. You can fish, you know what I'm saying? But you can't sing. I love you, but you can't do it. Who is your friend who will tell you the truth to obey Jesus? Because if you don't have anybody that's going to tell you the truth, you don't have friends because the truth will set you free and the father of lies is the devil. 
Mm. That was like a golf clap, like, on the PGA Tour, the 17th hole. Tim, <laughs> like, well, I'm gonna go to another church now where I can be encouraged. A lie doesn't encourage you. Lies don't encourage, I don't want this. <laughs> Lies don't encourage you, truth does. One of the great things about being an NFL player is every Monday, they put on a film of the game. And so whatever you said you done did in the game, everybody sees it. And you know what it's called? The eye and the sky don't lie. So I got some good news. Here's some good news. You ready? Watch, watch this. The O in the acronym good is obedience and faith. And listen to Romans 12.1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he's done for us. There it is. Before God asks you to act, he's already acted in grace. God does not ask you to do something that he doesn't give us the power to do it and the forgiveness that it covers us when we don't do it. Other translation says, in view of God's mercy. The people who disobey the most are the people who think they have to impress God. The people who obey are the ones who go, God, I am so jacked up, toe up, busted up from the flow up. If you don't show up, I can't be the dad you want me to be. I can't be the employee you want me to be. I can't be the person you want me to be. The same way that I need oxygen in my lungs is the way I need oxygen your mercy. Those are the people who obey. Can I say this lovingly? You need gospel friends who say, man, get off your narcissistic trip. You're not that important. You need to get on your knees and say, God, help me. You know what? I don't know who this is for, but some of you are struggling with pornography. You got all the stuff on your computers. By the way, things are always able to be broken. There's new apps all the time. You got something better than a computer program. You've got the gracious Holy Spirit in you, whispering to you, you're forgiven, you're loved, you're cherished, you're valuable, and Jesus is better. The motivation is not, oh, I'm going to try. The motivation is we fall to our knees and we go, look at that bloody cross. Look at that empty tomb. That should have been me, God, but that was you. That was you. That was you. That's what transforms your life. God don't need your help. He just needs you to say, I need the rest of the scripture says, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into the new person by changing the way you think. The scene of the crime is your, the scene of the crime is your, fill your mind with gospel truth. Fill your mind more with what Jesus has done instead of what you haven't done. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Gospel friends are committed to God's kingdom, obedience to the faith. So I like sushi. Um, my daughter turned me on to it when, I was, when she was about 10. And my daughter has a palate like me. We'll, we'll pretty much eat anything. Um, that's, we just do that kind of stuff. So I wasn't into sushi because I'm from the hood. We didn't have sushi restaurants in the hood. But, you know, brother got a little bit of money, moved to the suburbs, started eating some sushi and went to Starbucks. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so it's really good. Anyway, there's a sushi restaurant that I go to. And about four years ago, there was a young man there. Uh, his nickname was the Chicken Slayer. So when my kids were really young, and so I'll just use pre Presley from kindergarten all the way to sixth grade, I would volunteer to read to her classes. And I told you the story before, I would read to those classes because I wanted my kids to know I'm a good dad and I love them. But what I found out quickly was, is I wasn't just there for my daughter, I was there for the other kids who didn't have 
a dad. So time goes by, and I see this young man, the chicken slayer, at the sushi spot. And we're talking, and immediately he's telling me about all this new age, cultic, weird stuff. And he goes, like, you're a Christian, right? He's like, well, I'm not into that. And he's a little bit disparaging, but he's respectful because we have a relationship. So every time I would go in, I would just cast little seeds, little seeds. Anyway, Friday's my Sabbath. So Friday, I do my thing. Sushi's a part of it. I go to the restaurant where the chicken slayer used to work, but I hadn't seen him in years. And I sit down and I think about him for the first time in a long time. I said, like, I wonder what the chicken slayer is doing. So I'm eating my sushi. It's good. It's good. And I'm bouncing. I'm leaving because I got stuff to do, like go read. And so I'm walking out, and I hear these words, Mr. Gray. And I turn around, and it's the chicken slayer. His hair is like down here, and he comes up to me, and I'm like, okay, what does he want to talk about today? I'm glad to see him, but what are we going to debate about? And he goes, Mr. Gray, I just want to tell you, I know Jesus now. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, man. He goes, he goes, you used to come into the restaurant and you would, you would, you know, you would cast seeds, but there was another server here and he would challenge me. And man, I love Jesus and I want to be in the streets. I want to talk to the atheists. I want to talk to the agnostics. And I'm studying theology and philosophy and I'm studying apologetics. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, it, we were, we're just like, uh. We took a selfie together. Ah, it was awesome. What's my point? Love people and be present. Love people and be present. Listen, Christians are notorious for, here, read this track and come to my church. Wait, first of all, do you actually like love me as a human being? So I've known that kid since he was a little boy. Invest in people simply to love them. There are people all around you who need our Jesus. But here's the thing, though. Whatever, oh boy, this might be email worthy here. <laughs> Whatever we're most passionate about is what we try to convince people of. So if I went to your Facebook page, is it gonna be convincing people of stolen elections and politics? or the one who defeated sin, death, and evil. Mm. Now, seriously, like what are you trying to convert people to? There are so many people, particularly his age, Gen Z, that are leaving the church. They don't want nothing to do with it because they don't want a political Jesus. They want the lion and the lamb. They want the one who still raises the dead, the way maker, the promise keeper, the one who's told about in the New Testament and foreshadowed in the Old Testament. The O, gospel friends that last are committed to living on mission, to living on mission. Look at Matthew 4, 19 and 20. Jesus called out to them, this is the early Jewish disciples, and it's to us, come follow me, and I will show you how to fish for people. Here's one thing that I know about fishing. There's a few things I'm good at. Fishing is one of them. You have to have different baits for different times, different lures, and so there are different people that need to be reached differently, and here's the question, though. Who's gonna reach them if not you? Because a lot of times we go, well, somebody else will do it. Really? Really? There was a woman at my wife's job back in 1994 who consistently loved my wife and communicated the gospel to her. There are people all around us. Do you know how many new people are moving to this area, Charlotte, Fort Mill, Indian Land, Waxhaw, by the droves? People who don't know Jesus are coming to us. You're like, Derwin, but I, I, I don't know that much. Well, do you know Jesus? Then you know enough. When you invest in loving people with no agenda except for to invest in love, they're open to hear about our king. Let's move down to uh, D in the acronym. Gospel friendships that last are committed to determination. Hey, teenagers, some of you are graduated. You're getting ready to go to college. High five. It's going to be Awesome. It's going to be a little terrifying, but it's going to be awesome, too. You're going to spread your wings. You're going to grow. There are going to be ups and downs, but Jesus is faithful. 
I wish I could shield you from how hard life is. I was walking with a couple who's on our servant leader team. They've been at TC probably the full 11 years, and he had a heart attack a while back. He's doing good. His wife had cancer. My wife had cancer back in 04. So we're talking back and forth about, man, when it's time for the scans, all the anxiety comes up. But in the midst of that, we're talking about Jesus, and we're talking about his faithfulness. We're talking about his kingdom, and we're encouraging each other. So what I want to do is I want to encourage all of us with this word right here because we need gospel determination in a world that is broken, in a world that's hard, and God wants to give us gospel grit but we need to speak life over each other. We need friends who will speak life over each other. Well, the Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is gonna speak life over us. Romans 8, 32 through 39, he says this, he did not even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. Whenever you doubt God loves you, remember that his father gave him up for us how will he not also with him grant us everything? Who can bring an accusation against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus is the one who died, but even more has been raised. Let me say that again. But even more has been raised. Listen, because Jesus has been raised, there is always a way. The story is not over. You may be at a semicolon. You may be at a colon. You may be at a parenthesis. But God is still writing. God gets the last word. Death does not get the last word. Evil does not get the last word. Pain and suffering does not get the last word last word. God is so great that he takes the last word and he'll write a new story, a new song in your life, a new hope and a new purpose. That's who he is. It goes on. He also is at the right hand of God and intercedes for us. Teenagers intercede means he's praying for us. Verse 35, who can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword as it is written? Because of you, we're being put to death all day long. We're counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Oh, my, my, my. But verse 37, no, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. You need gospel friends who will look at you and your situation and say, no, 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 no. In all these things, you are more than a conqueror because of Christ who loves us. Notice, it ain't because you're great or Derwin's great. It's because we're loved by a great God. Who is your friend that'll speak to you like that? Who is your friend that will remind you that you are more than a conqueror in Christ who loves us? In case you don't know, let me have fun oh, all by myself for a minute. This conquering Christ is the Lamb of God. He's the Alpha. He's the Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the first. He's the last. He is immutable. He is indestructible. He is unrivaled. He is unmatched. There is none like him. None will be after him. He is the King of glory. If you know him, let me hear an amen. If you know him, tell him that he's good. If you know him, call out to him. Let him know. No, he's a good king. We need some people who call on him. Like, guys, hold on, hold on. Okay, sit down, sit down. For those of you who are new, I do this all the time, not when I'm just on stage. This is me if you hang out with me. This is me. Seriously, this isn't an act. I need this. So if you get something out of it, awesome. Call out to him. It's right here in the Bible. You can read it too. God is no respecter of persons. Where was I? Okay, here we go. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels or rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, those are demonic realm, or any other created thing. Watch this now. Teenagers will be able to separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So when things get hard, you need friends who whisper in your ear, God is good. 
We are a people of God's kingdom. We are a people that obey. We are a people that live on mission. And we are a people of gospel determination. You will get through this because of our King. Our worship team is gonna sing a song and it's a part of the sermon and as they're singing, let it ricochet in your soul and then I'm gonna come back out and lead us in a time of prayer. Oh 
Family, let's pray. The only reason that we can be gospel friends is because, God, you chose to leave the 99 and not leave the one behind. We are that one. You came to get us not because we had it together. You came to get us not because you saw our potential. You came to get us because that's what you do. You rescue, you forgive sins, you you make us new, you incorporate us into your kingdom. And it is that love and mercy that is the blood that pumps our heart of worship and obedience. Transformation Church, may we be a community of gospel friends. I want to pray for those who are saying, hey, preacher, as I listen to this sermon, I'm recognizing that I don't, I don't know Jesus the way you're describing him. And today, I, I want to get to know him. I, I want to follow him. I want to enter into his kingdom. If you're ready to give your life to him and to receive his life, if you're ready to exchange your unrighteousness for his righteousness, if you're ready to exchange your dead life for his resurrection life, if you're ready to exchange your entire being to be in him, in the silence of your heart, I want you to say this to him. Today, King Jesus, I bow my knee to you. I'm the one that you left the 99 behind to come and rescue. I hear you calling my voice. I hear whispers of love. I hear an invitation into forgiveness. I hear an invitation into your kingdom and new life. And today I surrender. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and three days later he rose from the dead and today I commit my life to you and to walking with you as a part of your people. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Can we give God a round of applause? You may be seated. Thank you so much. Uh, for those viewing online and for us here in person as well, uh, you'll see a QR code pop up on our screen. If you're doing it by PC or your phone, you can go right to our connection card by TV. Just open up your camera app point it at the QR code and it'll take you to our connection card. And here's what's gonna happen, is that connection card is gonna let us know that you prayed to receive Christ. Let us know, number one, because we wanna celebrate with you. Number two, we wanna walk alongside of you. We believe that God has many things that he wants to accomplish in you and for you to experience the depths of his mercy. So we want you to fill that information out. All right, Pastor Curtis and Alex are going to come and share our soul tattoo with us and other cool things. <laughs> amen, amen. What an incredible way to close out this beautiful sermon series. Yeah, yeah. As we uh, close out, your soul tattoo for today is to commit to being a gospel friend, commit to being the hands and feet, commit to understanding what Christ has done for you so that you can then be that, be that to someone else. Yeah. Receive that. Let that really be implanted. It's called a tattoo on purpose. Mm. Let it's it be word. implanted like right that. there, right? Yes, that's a soul tattoo for a purpose. So that our action step is lived out in him. Continue to develop gospel friendships. Invite somebody to community. Into your TC group, if you're a part of one, or maybe you need to step in, and that's a space that you can begin to get connected. We talked about serving also as another spot for that. We're going to begin our Jonah series next Woo! weekend. So it's a great time to step into community and join together in that. We want you to be able to do that.